This is a bit of raw video of a meeting held at the Southside Slopes on September 11, 2007. Much of what the director says is called into question. I have serious concerns about the entire process, but I'll just let you watch.
who I am. I'm going to tell you, I mean, I've been told I lack discretion, but I'm going to be as honest as I can. I was less than pleased with all four of the respondents. And uh, I think it did a disservice to the process when I really went through those RFPs, because at least two, and I'm not going to name individuals, I'm not going to go into details, because we haven't formally either rejected or accepted, you know, the submissions, is that uh, at least two I could have went through in five minutes. So essentially they didn't give the process much thought. Some of the other folks who were really uh, calling us consistently and, and trying to cut side deals, you know, to basically circumvent the RFP process, you know, promises of we can bring income to the community, we can create jobs, we can create all these development opportunities, it just it never came to fruition. So uh, it is what it is. We have what I consider to the community, this is the first public utterance that I've made of this, we have four bad RFPs. So where do we go from here? Uh, we have three options. You know, we have three options. One, we toss them all out as a, as a group. We get to the community and say, hey, look, we share what we're able to share with the community, and we're going to do that. I know there was some concern that the community would not be part of the decision-making process. Well, this mayor has made that clear. That's not going to be the case. That's not how it's going to work. So we're, we're going to open it up. That's going to happen. Uh, two, we, we reissue our people with the expectation that we really depend on the associations to form the local development company, the Slugs Association, and others to really go out on the streets and see if there's some real viable, uh, you know, really interested vendors who may want to respond to this RFP in, in earnest. And so that's the other approach. And the third is that we sit down and look at ways that we can maybe capitalize the project ourselves and put together some, some creative strategies for funding and come up with the best and highest use for that site. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we'll make this a, uh, it's not going to be a prolonged, uh, you know, protracted process. We're going to sit down. I can, I'm certainly going to consult on there regarding next steps and some really strong next steps so that we can move this forward. I've been meeting with Councilman Cook. He's well aware of the issues. He's been extremely welcome and supportive. He said, let's get something done. We need to get something done. Uh, ranging from creative financing from maybe getting a municipal loan and some seed money to go to the foundations and really capitalize the project. So, you know, other than that, I don't have a lot more to tell you. I can't do anything that's put together. You guys went out and funded a master plan. It would be foolish to not take a look at that master plan. Either we need to tweak it, we need to support it, or we need to look at some elements of that master plan and maybe say, let's phase that in. Because it has a lot of uh, good qualities, and certainly it's well done. We, we know the players. Uh, you can go on, you can go online, you can go on local development companies, you can go online to their website and uh, pull up the uh, South South Madison plan. Yeah. Or let's have it Um, RFPs be made open so that we can see what, what was submitted? Uh, the process, Mark, would be for, for uh, the process that I would like to see unfold when we start to talk about looking at RFPs is that we put together a manageable group uh, because it, it's going to be difficult to sit down with the entire community and go line by line for an RFP. I don't think there's a process in the country that does that. So what we would do is put together a good representation of the community, and, and that's not saying we're going to restrict the number of individuals who can take a look at it as part of the process. But once again, it's an advisory capacity element, because it is an RFP, and it, once, once we accept it, it becomes a legal document, 
part of the city, legal contract with the city of Pittsburgh. So the community's role will be advisory, but that's going to be a strong role at this point. Because let's, let's face it, this isn't, um, this isn't rocket science, folks. I mean, all the secrecy about it, uh, it is what it is. I'd like to not have to do it that way, but this is governance. Uh, you know, we're trying to develop a park. We're trying to create a recreational amenity for the community. You know, this isn't Los Alamos. I mean, we're not, these aren't legal secrets or anything. So, uh, you know, we'll do the best we can, and, and we'll go from there. But to say that we're going to open this up to the entire community, every single person, that's not feasible. And it's, it's probably not going to happen. So, uh, at least if I have my say, it won't happen like that. So. Sure. Reduced. Let, let me just give you that. I'll, once again, I'll try to be brief. I, I tend to not be brief, but I'll, I'll try. Uh, back in, in, in Bolivia, I'm, I'm starting this project. It's been going on so long. I, if I'm playing, uh, taking liberties with the dates, just forgive me. I do believe it was 2000 or 2004. We had representatives of the Pittsburgh Penguins who actually allowed some of their techs to come over, make an assessment. It was actually a cursory assessment of, of the site. They went in, looked at the site. Uh, made some preliminary recommendations, and we thought we were going to be successful in getting a full report from them in writing, but their legal counsel who happened to be with them at the time told them, don't do that. And to, to my su uh, surprise, and actually dismay, um, I actually wanted the opposite to happen. They said at that point that the system was mechanic mechanically had some integrity left to the system, which means that we could have continued to uh, function as a, a rank, even though I would have liked to hurt the, I'm a builder, I like to tear down and start from scratch. So I wanted to say, let's just tear the place down, let's put up a new structure, but that wasn't the case. And uh, their recommendation was that we could put together a, uh, a strategy where we could capitalize and do a retrofit and actually have a viable ring. And, and, and you know, the you know, print media, electronic media, on our website, uh, we, we actually sent direct responses to those individuals who had made inquiries over the two, two and a half year period. We did direct mail to those folks, got the RPs into their hands uh, with the expectation that they would respond in kind, and that never happened. So beyond that, uh, I'm at a loss for, you know, how we really reach out and touch, you know, those potential respondents who may come in with a viable pro project for this particular case. So that's what I'll be talking to Rick about, and, and Kevin will sit down and discuss it again, see if there are any other options. And uh, my suggestion is that we go back out again. And uh, because the other two uh, propositions are going to be long term, and it's going to delay the process even more, especially if we have to piece and build a funding strategy together, uh, that's certainly going to take a lot longer. Uh, and, and, and including this loan, if we talk about any kind of municipal loan, we have to put together a performance reformer before we even think of it because of how we pay this loan back. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. There's a lot to dispute in that presentation, but I know for certain we have a vacant, abandoned hockey rink in a big park on the south side that has been neglected for years. And many of us in the community have been pushing hard to get that RFP open and out and done. Finally, something happened in the May 2007, and sadly, everything was rejected. I don't believe a good enough effort was launched by the city as stewards of this facility. We have a dark hole here, and the kids are suffering. They can't wait around. Okay, so now the Penguins want to build a practice facility, and the wrong place to build that is over where they play the games. It would mean it would be inoperable for all the home games. Kids don't want to have their schedules impacted by the Penguin schedule. This has been going on for some time, and this is why I got into politics. When they opened up that UPMC sports facility that was supposedly state-of-the-art on the south side, but the fields weren't even regulation size, I got interested. The way we treat our kids and the opportunities we give to sports and recreation and city parks is despicable. Closing the swim pools, closing the rec centers, you name it, we need to do better. And when big deals happen, 
like this Penguins Arena, we need to make sure that the local sports kids and the people that want to live here are taken care of. So next up, let's shift gears a little bit. Let's look at these RFPs. When was there a meeting it, with the community and the concerned citizens? Well, hey, it didn't happen. And who reviewed these RFPs? I think the materials in the RFPs, and are they ever posted to the net, aren't happening because they don't want anything to happen there. They don't even care. This is why we need people that care about youth and sports and recreation elected to office, be it controller or city hall. 